Hey guys, Brian with Kiaris, and in today's video I'll be going over Go Launcher EX, which we have done an article on, and this is a supplementary video. So let's uh, give this a go. Alright, so here we have Go Launcher EX installed on Samsung's Infuse 4G on AT&T, and right now I'm running four home screens like so. There you go. And what I'm going to show you is how to essentially customize your your interface so that uh, you no longer have uh, the default Android or you know HTC Sense or Samsung's TouchWiz uh, user experience. Um, so first, let me actually clear everything off of here so I can show you how to do that. Let's reset to default right here. And so there's a few different widgets and applications that I'll be using. Um, you can find the QR codes for all of those on the article at www.carries.net. Um, I'll be going, those, going over those as I go anyways, though. Um, so the first thing I want to do is clear out the main default page right now. And after that, I'm going to set a theme. And you can do that by going to Android Market and... Uh, searching for Go Launcher themes, and the one I have, ooh, that's not how you get to it. Actually, how you do themes is you go to menu and hit themes. It's that simple. And uh, it comes with some, and the one I'm going to use though is this Android Honeycomb theme. What I'll do is I'll give you a background as well as a bunch of icons. Um, so, what we want to do next, uh, I want to get rid of this notification bar and put in my own clock as well as my own notifications. So what we're going to do is go to preferences and go to display settings. Uh, we're going to hide the status bar. Uh, we're actually going to want to also hide the app icon labels and because I can recognize most of my apps just by their icon. I don't need their name as well. And we're going to change the grid size. I like it uh, at 5 by 4 um, I've tried 7x5, or I should say 5x7, but it gets a little too crowded, so I prefer the you know the look of the 5x4. Um, let's see. Wallpaper scrolling, so your wallpaper scrolls with you, and you can change the transition effect. I'll show you that in a second. Alright, so there we go. The status bar is, uh, the notification bar is gone. Uh, now we're going to add our own widgets. So, we're going to use Go Widgets. Oh, whoops, one second. Go to widgets and go widgets uh, weather slash clock. Here we go, four by two. And there you go. Now we're going to want to add our widgets so we can look at our battery life as well as our signal. Uh, oh, actually, let's do brightness level first. So that's a pretty nifty app. I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, let's see, flashlight. Just a simple button like that. And then last but not least, let's see, it should be mobile signal widget. There we go. And so, there we go. Now we're displaying all of our things that were once on our navigation, ooh, on our status bar. Ah, I haven't set the... Uh, gestures yet. Anyways, so we have that now displayed prominently on the front like so. Um, the next thing I'm going to add is the volume controls. Uh, I like to have all of the uh, settings pretty much right in front of me. That way I can maximize the uh, battery life. Uh, let's see. No updates. Blue. Match the honeycomb look. Transparent background. And volume and mode. So we're going to create this widget and now we have this volume control widget right here which lets you silence or put it on or vibrate mute or put it on normal mode and by clicking right here you get access to all of your different uh, volume uh, volume sliders uh, really quickly without having to go through the menu and go through settings to find this uh, pretty useful app uh, unintrusive and it also matches the color scheme in this situation uh, this uh, brightness widget right here lets you quickly either use this as a slider or you can set it to use one of the defaults or you can even put it back on auto so uh, extremely useful again if you can just leave it on you know zero percent when you're just using this just for calls and texts and then if you're actually playing a game or something you can put up to 75 percent or if you're outdoors put up to 100 percent 
And uh, so next thing I want to do, I don't want these little dots up top here. I, I know when, which pages are which. Let's go to preferences again and go to display. And what we're going to do is we're going to hide the screen indicator. Um, you can have that screen indicator hidden and then show up when you're switching screens as well. That's another option, but uh, I'll just completely remove it. And now I will show, actually, where are we here? Uh, let's actually add get gesture functions right now. Um, that's in operation settings. And uh, what you want, what you can do is when you slide up or down on the uh, home screen, you can have a function assigned to that. And for going up, I think bringing up the app drawer is pretty intuitive. Um, I don't know why I went to that. Uh, oh, wait a minute. That's not what I wanted to do. Show app drawer. There we go. And for glide down, I think uh, bringing down the notification bar is also pretty intuitive. So I will do that. Um, oh dear, we're getting text. All right. So show notifications. All right. So as you can see now, we don't have the dots representing the home pages any, or the home screens anymore. And when I go up. Up, oh, there we go. It brings up the app drawer. And when I go down, it brings down the notifications. All right. So, next thing we're going to want to do, let's add some more widgets just to show you what it looks like. Um, let's put, let's see, let's put Facebook on here. Let's put, let's put Twitter on here as well. Twitter large. And uh, what I'm going to show you now is the uh, how you can customize the transition animation. If you go to preferences and go to uh, display settings, you can change the transition effect. Um, I'll do one that's pretty apparent, windmill. And now when you switch from screen to screen, it's much like a windmill. There's a bunch of different options. You should try them all out. I personally like the I think wave transition you can see here just looks like that uh, there's one that has like a 3d cube you can be from the inside or the outside um, and there's some other good ones too uh, that, but I like the wave one and uh, another feature uh, gesture related you can do is uh, when you hold down the shortcuts right here you can change the gesture responses uh, so for example pretend you sometimes want to see your notification bar um, but you, you don't always want it there. You can click right here, and without swiping down and viewing the whole thing, you can simply slide up on the uh, app drawer menu or app drawer icon, and it will bring up the notification bar. And just as easily, you can put it away. So, uh, not, pretty much, you can you can map any of these keys. There's uh, 15 in total. You can also reduce it to just five or to 10, but you can map all of those to their own uh, specific functions. So, uh, in line with that, there's another application that we have. Um, called uh, what's it called swipe pad and what it does is essentially this so I've assigned the top right edge of this screen as or of any screen actually to bring up the swipe pad application so when I click here and I draw to the middle I immediately get access to uh, 12 different applications um, which you can set and uh, I've left this spot blank just in case I accidentally come here so I can just drag it there and then exit out of it but it's a really fast way to open up apps like this that you use frequently um, so you know combining this with uh, you know all the different gesture functions and as well as the uh, swipe pad makes it really easy to access a bunch of different uh, screens from just your main default screen um, Oh, another uh, gesture function I guess is the pinch to zoom when you do that on your on your uh, home screens it brings up the uh, the preview uh, preview screen so what you can do from here, you can quickly add screens. Um, you can add, I've added more than 20, and uh, not that you'd ever need that many, but if you so desire, you can. As you can see, you can quickly delete them, as well as quickly set the uh, default screen. Um, this is definitely one of the most fluid and intuitive uh, preview UIs I've seen, and this alone is pretty amazing. So uh, definitely good stuff, and almost all the other uh, launchers including the default launchers are limited to seven or nine screens so getting you know 20 plus is excessive but you know pretty cool um, let's see what else we got here ah second best part of this um, well let's go over to the app doc <clears throat> so the one thing I didn't like so much was that you couldn't drag and drop icons in and out of the dock but you know I 
easily sacrifice that for the ability to, you know, apply different gestures as well as choose the icons. So, uh, you know, I'm not constantly swapping out icons back and forth, so it's not really that necessary that you have that feature. Um, so, like I said, you can have applications or shortcuts. We can put Angry Birds right here. You can customize the icon. You can choose it as a, a default icon, a theme icon, or you can choose your own custom icon. That's the default icon. If you choose one from the theme, it could be, you know, I don't know, replace it with... None of these look related, but, you know, I could put it as that film strip, and that would go to Angry Birds. Um, like I said, you can swipe around through here like that. Uh, the next uh, main feature that Go Launcher has is its um, application drawer. Uh, let's bring that up right now. Um, you'll notice this one is quite different from most application drawers. Uh, up top, it has three different uh, tabs. Uh, one for your standard all application view, uh, one for your recent applications, which I don't have any open right now because I restarted the phone recently, and the uh, the running application, or the running tab, which gives you a, a view of all these different run running applications. Um, uh, I'll quickly go over the customization for this app drawer. If you go to uh, settings here, oh, looks like we are undergoing a power outage. Uh, I'll continue for now since it looks like you can still see what's going on. All right, so there's two types of screen orientations. You can either do a horizontal and or, excuse me, horizontal and paginated, or vertical continuous. So vertical continuous is much like uh, you know the stock gingerbread scrolling versus the the horizontal paginated, much like uh, TouchWiz or Apple's iOS. Uh, I like the vertical continuous, and you can actually choose a custom background here. Um, you know that's pretty cool, I think. Let's just, for example, sake, choose one right now. You know, it lets you crop out the image. And you can choose the grid size as well. It doesn't offer as much customiz customizability as the uh, home screen, but uh, actually, I like 4x4. And you can actually select certain icons or certain applications to not show up. So, for example, let's go back for just a second. As you can see, we have Angry Birds, AT&T Code Scanner. We can actually hide those if we so choose. Actually, you can do it from here now. I think about it. You can hide an app. And then, you know, choose Angry Birds, AT&T Code Scanner. You know, now they're gone. So that's a pretty cool feature, I think. Um, also from this navigation menu, uh, if you hold down, other things you can do from this menu, I should say. If you hold down an application, what you can do is it activates uh, this mode well, all the apps are oscillating a little bit, much like on uh, the iOS. And from here, what you can do is you can quickly uninstall a program. So you just press the X right here. It takes you to the uninstall. I'm going to press cancel right now. But also, another thing you can do, you can uh, you can move. Oh, oopsie, did not mean to do that. That's fine, though. Um, anyways, you can move where, where the, uh, the app is, or the order of the app. But you can also create folders really quickly so like I accidentally did here if you drag an item onto another one it will bring up this little folder folder square as you can see right here I'm gonna put in this folder over here if it lets me there you go so now we have folders inside of the uh, app drawer which is a pretty nifty feature and you can name them right up here uh, if you can also drag these folders to the desktop and they bring it to move to screen and as you can see it will bring it to the uh, screen preview you can drop it right there, and you can see all the different uh, the content within the uh, the folder. Um, so, another feature we got in the running section is uh, the ability to lock certain programs uh, from being closed when you press close all programs. So, for example, if I want to lock this program and lock this program when I press close all programs those two won't be closed so a quick way to it's a pretty nifty feature there the go the go task manager actually will let you um, more quickly do this from the home screen widget uh, but if you so choose you can do it from the running section as well uh, let's see it's unlock and we can actually close and go to it as well or look at the application info. So pretty much it gives you this task manager uh, capability from the, um, the running, I mean from the app drawer. Uh, very useful I think.
if we go back to home, um, let's load up some of these widgets that come with, or that you can download, the Go widgets, I should say. Um, let's see here, Task Manager, there we go. So if we launch Task Manager, it gives us this nifty little 4x1 bar. Uh, and again, we can see all the different apps that are running. And by clicking on them, you can kind of nuke them so they don't run anymore. Of course, they'll come right back if they're in a widget or something. But a uh, pretty nifty tool to end programs without having to go through the uh, go to all the way to the task manager. And it also shows you how much memory you're using and how much you got left. All right, what else do we got here? Wallpaper, themes, settings, preferences. So I've shown you guys the basic display settings. Uh, you can hide a bunch of stuff. You can hide icon labels, a status bar. You can change the animations, the transitions. You can also remove screen indicators. In the dock settings, you can change the number of docks, each one with five. Uh, you can have them loop around so when you swipe, it goes back to the start. And you can also select the style in the background, which in this case is based on the theme. The app drawer settings, you can change whether you want it horizontal paginated or vertical scrolling. Um, you can add custom, custom backgrounds. You can choose a grid size, whether or not to have icon labels, as well as uh, the ability to hide the icon labels. And uh, ah, you can also change the animation for the transitions there as well, and you can lock applications. Um, in operation settings here, uh, what do we have here? This is where you change the gestures and the home key action. So you can actually change the home key's behavior as well. Um, I like it just to show the home screen, so I'm going to leave it there. But as you can see, I think there's about 10 options for you to choose. And uh, screen auto rotation, you know, self-explanatory. Advanced settings, I haven't played around with these too much. Um, some of these, you know, have warnings. But uh, if you so choose, you can use these different features, uh, such as high quality drawing, which uh, Presumably, let's see, yeah, it enables better quality imaging, but with reduced performance, clearly. And ah, another thing is you can activate these widgets, a Go Launcher EX notification widget, which uh, when you add a, let's see, when you add an icon to the app doc, let's add an application like Gmail. Ah, another thing that's really cool is that it gives you this fast scrolling icon. Uh, scroll bar I should say to the right when when you're adding applications so that makes it way faster to add applications instead of you know scrolling like this which takes forever so let's go to Gmail right now and what you'll see is that it has a little notification counter of uh, I don't know if this is gonna focus too well all right of uh, 38 unread emails right there so that's pretty cool and uh, one last thing, uh, if you want to add a bunch of applications to a screen, say like this one, um, it's not as tedious as it used to be. You can actually add a bunch at once. And like I said, once again, that little fast scroll, oops, that fast scroll bar comes up and you can go, you know, add a ton of applications at once. And it also has up here the uh, available space on the screen so you, so you know how much of it you're using. So I think that about wraps it up. Pretty much uh, um, Go Launcher EX and all its features, uh, all its gestures, all its different customizable uh, aspects and all its widgets. Um, definitely try it out yourself. Try some different themes, try some different settings, see what you like and get back to us at uh, www.carius.net. Uh, take it easy.